Hey guys, it's Basil Jane. Today I'm gonna to be doing one full week of healthy weight loss meal prep with you guys in just one hour. So in just one hour, all of our meals for the entire week for seven days are gonna be prepped. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. So it's perfect if you're really busy, but you're still trying to lose weight and you're still trying to eat healthy meals as well, then this is perfect for you. And yeah, that's about it. Let's get started with the recipes. This is a weight loss plan designed for women, specifically women who are trying to lose weight. Men or children will need to eat more to lose weight in a healthy way, just so you know. And each day is based on roughly 1,400 calories, but you can easily adjust the calories per day to suit your specific needs. At the end of this video, I'll show you how you can easily tweak the eating plan to give you anywhere from 1,200 calories to 1,600 calories per day or even more based on your specific calorie needs to lose weight. And I've specifically created these meals and recipes to be lower in calories, but to still be filling and to give you good sustained energy. These recipes are all balanced with good whole carbs, good protein and healthy fats, as it's important to eat all of the food groups while trying to lose weight in a healthy way. I'll also make sure to mention a plant-based alternative that you can use for any food items that are not plant-based. So to get started, you'll need some containers to store your meals in. You'll need 14 containers for all of your lunch and dinner meals as we're making food for seven days. If you'll be eating at home, then you can use covered bowls or other dishes. And you'll also need four small mason jars. You can also just use covered mugs or glasses. And you'll also need some reusable Ziploc bags or other small containers for snacks and other items. So because we want to meal prep seven full days of meals in just one hour, we need to start prepping and cooking the foods that will take the longest to cook. So we will work in that order. And at the end, we'll see all of the meals come together. Make sure that you've preheated your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or about 360 degrees Fahrenheit before you begin. Okay, so we're gonna start with the potatoes because they will take the longest to cook out of everything that we'll be making today. We're gonna make enough potatoes for four servings of dinner because we'll be using them for four out of the seven dinner meals. You'll need 400 grams of regular potatoes in total. I'm using regular baby potatoes, but you can just use a normal size if you want to. I've washed and chopped them up roughly and I'm adding them to a roasting pan with about one teaspoon of cooking oil, some Italian herb mix, black pepper and sea salt and I've only filled one half of the roasting tray because we're going to use the other half of the tray for something else in a couple of minutes so make sure that you keep your potatoes to the one side of your roasting tray and you can place the potatoes in your oven that you've preheated to about 180 degrees celsius or about 360 degrees fahrenheit for 30 to 50 minutes and then they'll be done Next, we need to start roasting the vegetables as these also take a long time to cook. I'm using vegetables that are already chopped up because this saves a lot of time if we only have an hour. And so many stores sell pre-chopped vegetables these days and you can use any vegetable mix that you want to. I've got two different vegetable mixes here for, you know, some variation throughout the week. I'm using a mix of butternut squash, beetroot and red onion for four out of the seven dinner meals. I'm using the entire bag because it's a smaller bag. And then I'm using a mix of butternut squash, red bell pepper and zucchini for the other three dinner meals. I'm only using about half the bag because as you can see, it's a much larger bag, but you can use all the same kinds of vegetables if you'd prefer for all of your dinner meals. So according to the nutrition information on the bags, I've used enough vegetables to give me roughly 70 calories per meal. We'll be adding some more vegetables later and that will take each vegetable serving to roughly 100 calories per dinner meal. And I'm including the calories for the oil that we're gonna use as well in all of that into the total calorie amount for the vegetables. So I've added the vegetables to another baking tray with about half a teaspoon of oil to each vegetable mix and about it's about one teaspoon in total with some Italian herb mix, black pepper and sea salt. I also decided to actually add a few cherry tomatoes to the one mix, which won't add too many more calories and they're really nice when oven roasted, I love it. So you can add the vegetable tray to the oven with the potatoes and they'll take roughly 30 to 40 minutes to cook fully. Now we're gonna start cooking the grains. We'll be making quinoa as well as some brown rice for, you know, some variation. Feel free to only use one of them if you'd prefer to do that, that's totally fine. To a pot, you can add one serving of dry brown rice 
with three servings of hot water. Just careful not to burn your hands while you're working with the hot water. The brown rice will take about 40 minutes to cook. And to another pot, you can add one serving of dry quinoa with three servings of hot water. So it's a one to three ratio for both grains. One serving of grains to three servings of water. But you can add a little bit more water if you need to as you go. And the quinoa will only take about 15 minutes to cook. So make sure you get it off the stove after about 15 minutes. Make sure you time it. You can make as much of each grain as you need. You can start with about half a cup of dry brown rice, which should yield about one and a half cups of cooked brown rice, which is what you'll need today for this meal prep. And you'll need about three and a half cups of cooked quinoa for this meal prep. So you can start by making one and one sixth of a cup of dry quinoa as a rough guideline to yield about three and a half cups of cooked quinoa. You can bring both pots of grains to a boil on the stove and then let them simmer until they're fully cooked. And remember to check your quinoa after about 15 minutes and your brown rice should be done after about 40 minutes. Next, we're gonna prep enough salad to last seven days. We'll be using the salad to go with our lunches. So the key is to use ingredients that will keep well in a salad and that will keep well for a couple of days in a salad. We'll be making two different salad options as well for some variation throughout the week. To start, I've got a whole lot of fresh kale that I've washed and roughly chopped up. Kale keeps really well in a salad, better than other leafy greens, so I love using this. I'm dividing the kale into two salad bowls so that we can make two salad variations. And I'm adding one teaspoon of olive oil to each bowl with a little bit of sea salt. I'm just going to rub the olive oil and the sea salt into the kale just for a minute. This actually helps to make the kale softer and give it a better texture. And I've got enough to have, you know, like a nice big handful for each meal. And we're going to use this for seven meals, seven lunches. So make sure you've got about seven handfuls. So I've also roughly chopped up some vegetables and I'll only be using ones that keep well for a few days in a salad. Carrots, red bell pepper and celery. And then I've also got some tiny little cherry tomatoes which I'll be leaving whole to make sure that they stay fresh. And then I've got a little bag of pre-grated beetroot, you know, to save time. And you can also buy all of your vegetables pre-chopped to save extra time as well. So to my first salad, I'm adding the celery, one or two stalks chopped up in total, and then some red bell pepper. I just used one medium red bell pepper, and then also a nice big handful of cherry tomatoes. I've used about a heaped cup, if you wanna know the amounts. These are all really low calorie vegetables as well. Fresh lemon juice is a must to keep the salad fresh for the entire week, and it also adds really good flavor. And then some black pepper and Italian herb mix. And then you can just mix that up and put it aside for now. For the next salad, I'm adding chopped carrot. I've used about four medium carrots because I love carrots so much, but you don't have to use as many. You can just use like two carrots. And then I'm using some of that grated beetroot, a nice big handful, and then some dried cranberries as well. Try to use ones that are free of preservatives and refined sugar if you can find them. Otherwise, it's totally chilled. You can just use whatever you can get. Don't stress about it though. Um, it's just cranberries but the ones that I use are sweetened with fruit juice and they sulfate free. I've used about four tablespoons of dried cranberries because we're making the salad into four servings and then I'm adding about two tablespoons of unsweetened balsamic vinegar with a little bit of fresh lemon juice just don't get the seeds in there and black pepper and then you can just mix that up and put it aside again for a few minutes and this is one of my favorite salads ever it's freaking amazing. Okay, now that the salads are prepped, now we're gonna prep some of the protein sources. We're gonna make some salmon, we're gonna make some chicken, we're gonna make some eggs, we're gonna make some chickpeas, but I, don't worry, I will mention a plant-based protein source that you can use an, as an alternative if you'd prefer that instead of the, the fish, the chicken and the eggs, but they will be roughly the same calories. So the potatoes have been roasting for a few minutes already. So now we're gonna add some salmon to the baking tray and that's why I said keep the potatoes to one side. I've made a little divider out of the <laughs> baking foil um, so that the potatoes don't get like salmon-y. No one wants that. But if you have some kind of little divider, you can use that. I have 400 grams of salmon here. So four times 100 grams servings. 
because we'll be using this for four out of the seven dinners. And I'm seasoning that with a little bit of sea salt, black pepper, and a bit of fresh lemon juice. And as a plant-based alternative to the salmon, you can use two thirds of a cup of cooked or canned chickpeas per serving. So that would be two plus two thirds of a cup in total. And chickpeas are delicious roasted. You can just add them to your baking tray with some sea salt, some pepper, some herbs, and about one teaspoon of oil. And you can place the salmon in the oven for about 15 minutes or longer if you need to. And the chickpeas will take about 30 minutes to cook. Next, we're prepping some chicken. I have got 300 grams of chicken breast meat to make three servings of dinner. So 100 grams per serving. I just got pre-sliced chicken breast meat to make it easier. But you can just slice yours up if you need to. Just place the chicken in a pan with some sea salt, some pepper, Italian herb mix, a little bit of fresh lemon juice and about one teaspoon of oil and about two tablespoons of pure tomato paste. As an alternative to the chicken, you can use some firm tofu. Use 150 grams of firm tofu per serving of chicken. So you'd need 450 grams of firm tofu in total and you can cook it exactly the same way as the chicken with exactly the same ingredients and cook the chicken or the tofu over a medium to high heat on the stove for about 10 to 15 minutes. You can toss it with a spatula and you can add just a little splash of water if you need to if while you're cooking it if the pan gets too dry. Now for the eggs, I'm using six eggs to make hard boiled eggs for three of the lunches. So we'll use two eggs per serving. Carefully add the eggs to a pot of hot water and bring the water to a boil in the pot on the stove with the eggs in it and then let it simmer for about 10 minutes to make the eggs hard boiled. You can also use black beans as an alternative if you don't want to use the eggs and you can use pre-cooked or canned black beans, roughly one cup per serving instead of the two eggs. So about three cups in total for three lunches. I'm also going to steam some broccoli to add to our dinners. So I've got enough here for a little handful serving for each dinner. So seven servings in total for seven dinners. You can do about 60 grams or so per serving if you want to get all specific. So you do roughly about 420 grams in total for all seven servings of dinner. You can also use broccoli florets or another low calorie vegetable that you'd prefer like asparagus or zucchini. So just place that broccoli in a steamer and steam it for about 10 to 15 minutes. So make sure that you set a timer. Okay, while everything else is still busy cooking, we're going to make all of the breakfasts for the whole week, which is going to be actually really quick to do. For breakfast, we're going to make four different overnight oats recipes and then we're also going to prep three smoothies as well. And each breakfast will be roughly 400 calories. To each jar, you can add half a cup of dry rolled oats and you can also add two teaspoons of chia seeds to each jar. Then to two of the overnight oats, only add one quarter of a cup of water and then to the other two overnight oats, add half a cup of water and you'll see why in just a moment. So do a quarter cup of water to two of them and half a cup of water to the other two. And then you can also add a little pinch of cinnamon to each jar for some extra flavor. So to the two overnight oats that we only added a quarter cup of water, we're gonna add about two thirds of a cup of yogurt. I'm using coconut yogurt because I'm dairy free, but you can also use full cream dairy yogurt or any other yogurt substitute that you'd prefer preferably plain and unsweetened and the reason we needed less water is because the yogurt you know with the yogurt you don't want to add too much water and then to the other two overnight oats that we used half a cup of water for i'm adding 10 raw cashew nuts to one and about one tablespoon of unsweetened peanut butter to the other one now for the fruit i'm adding one cup of chopped up apple to the one yogurt one and one smashed banana to the other yogurt one to the overnight oats that I added the cashew nuts to, I'm adding half a cup of diced frozen pineapple and also half a cup of frozen blueberries. And then to the peanut butter one, I'm adding one full cup of frozen mixed berries and then also one teaspoon of 100% pure maple syrup to each of the berry ones. The yogurt ones with the apple and the banana shouldn't need the sweetener because the apple and the banana are both quite sweet. The berry ones, they have slightly less calories in them from the fruit as well. So it kind of all evens itself out, but you can add sweetener if you do need it to the other ones. 
So just mix them all together and cover them. And you can easily make the same flavor for each day if you want to, or you can make a different one for each day like I did. I've also got lots of other overnight oats recipes that I've already shown you on this channel. So I will link a couple of videos below in the description box for you where I've done other overnight oats recipes if you'd rather try another flavor. Okay, for the smoothie prep, you'll need about three medium-sized Ziploc bags, which you can easily reuse again. I've peeled and sliced up three medium bananas and also one medium avocado and I've divided all of that into three so to each Ziploc bag I'm adding one medium banana and one third of an avocado. Banana and avocado both freeze really well if they've already been peeled and both of them are really good in smoothies so that's perfect. From here we're going to make each smoothie slightly different so that we have a different smoothie each day. To one bag we're going to add one cup of diced frozen mango. To the second bag we're going to add one cup of frozen mixed berries. And to the third bag we're going to add one cup of frozen blueberries. The berries are lower in calories than the mango so because of that I'm adding one tablespoon of dry rolled oats to each of the berry smoothies. This is going to kind of help to balance out the amount of calories and also help to give us more carbs in those smoothies. And to the mixed berry one, I'm also adding a small handful of fresh baby spinach, which also freezes really well actually. And you can add this to all of the smoothies if you want to, or you don't have to add it at all if you don't want to. So that's our three smoothies prepped, which were roughly 300 calories each. So to add another 100 calories and some extra protein to each of those three breakfasts, we're going to add some raw nuts to the meals. I've added about 100 calories of raw nuts to each bag, which is what I like to do when, when I have a smoothie. I like to eat some raw nuts on the side. I've paired 10 raw cashew nuts with the mango banana smoothie. Totally gives me like tropical vibes, so I thought it would be fun. And then I've got 8 raw walnut halves to go with the mixed berry banana spinach smoothie. And then also 14 raw almonds to go with the blueberry banana smoothie. So just seal the Ziploc bags and then you can put that smoothie prep straight into the freezer and you can store the little nuts of bags in the fridge if you want to. I decided to keep the snacks for the week really simple and easy because we're taking this hour to make some wholesome healthy meals. So I'm going to be prepping a couple of different fruit and nut snacks for the week and each snack will be roughly 200 calories. For the first day, I've kept it super simple with a classic apple and almond snack. <laughs> I've got 14 raw almonds and a big medium sized pink lady apple, which is my favorite kind of apple. So that will be roughly 200 calories in total. I'm also going to do one more of the exact combination for another day because I really like pink lady apples and almonds. So 14 raw almonds and a pink lady apple again. The third snack will be similar but a little bit different, 8 raw walnut halves and 1 green apple to mix things up a bit, you know, which is also going to be roughly 200 calories. Then the fourth and fifth snacks will be the same again, each will be 2 small clementines paired with 10 raw pecanut halves, which is roughly 200 calories again. And then the sixth and seventh snack will be the same too. I've got one medium sized nectarine with 100 grams of strawberries and also 10 raw cashew nuts. Again about 200 calories for the whole snack. And I've made a double quantity of that and you can store all of your snacks in the fridge until it's time to eat them. So basically what I've done is I've taken 100 calories of fruit and 100 calories of nuts for each snack and I've put that together to make a 200 calorie fruit and nut snack. So it's really simple you can use any fruit and any nut combination that you'd like. And if these snacks are too boring for you, that's okay. Then I've got more 200 calorie snack ideas on my blog. I'll link that blog post below for you. Or you can feel free to substitute these snacks for any other 200 calorie snack or even a 200 calorie snack bar. Okay, so the quinoa and the rice have finished cooking and the eggs are boiled and the chicken is cooked and the vegetables are done roasting and the potatoes and the salmon are also done and the broccoli is also finished steaming. So now everything is done cooking. We can finally finish putting the lunches and the dinners together. First, we're gonna finish prepping the lunches. So for the first lunch, we're gonna use the quinoa and we're gonna use the chickpeas and also one of the salads that we made. I've got four containers here and I'm measuring out half a cup of cooked quinoa to each of the four containers.
Then I'm measuring out two thirds of a cup of canned chickpeas to each container. I just drained and rinsed the chickpeas. You can also use cooked chickpeas if you'd prefer to. And then I'm dividing one of the salads to go with these lunches too. I've used the balsamic, carrot, beetroot and dried cranberry salad because I think it's a really nice pairing with the chickpeas and the quinoa. And I made the salad a bit bigger than the other one because we're going to use this one for four portions. And that is four lunches for the week already done, super simple, and each lunch is roughly 400 calories in total. For the other three lunches, we're going to use the eggs that we boiled. So I took the eggs off the stove after about 10 minutes of boiling to make them hard boiled, but not like overcooked. To get the eggshells off easily, I actually like to crack the eggshells a bit on the side of the pot and then just let the cooked eggs sit in cold water for about a minute or so after they're done boiling and then the shells they actually come off really easily. So for a plant-based alternative, you can use about one cup of cooked black beans if you'd prefer to do that, you know, instead of the boiled eggs. Then I'm measuring out half a cup of cooked brown rice to add to each of the containers. with two of the boiled eggs into each container as well and I've left the eggs whole so that they stay fresher for longer. And then I'm just dividing up the other salad to go in the containers with the rice and the eggs. This is the pepper, tomato and celery salad and I made this one a little bit smaller than the other one because I'm using this for three portions of lunch and I used the other one for four portions of lunch. These three lunches are also roughly 400 calories each and you can just cover them and store all of the lunches in the fridge until you're ready to eat them. Okay, let's finish putting together our dinners for the week with all of our prepped ingredients and then we're done. Then we're all done for the entire week. We're gonna use the chicken we made or you can now use the tofu alternative for these three dinners. I'm serving half a cup of cooked quinoa to each of my three containers and you can also use half a cup of cooked brown rice here if you would prefer to do that instead of the quinoa. Then I'm just dividing up the cooked chicken between the three containers. So that's 100 grams of chicken per container. So you'll also divide your cooked firm tofu here between your three meals if you want a plant-based alternative. And then I'm serving one of the roast vegetable mixes. Here I'm using the vegetable mix with butternut squash, tomatoes, bell pepper and zucchinis to go with the chicken and the quinoa. And I'm saving the other half of the veggies, the other vegetable mix, to go with the next four dinners that we'll be making. And then don't forget the steamed broccoli if you made that too. So I'm dividing the broccoli up between seven servings because we'll use some for the other four dinners as well. So just use enough for three servings here. And after you've added the broccoli, these dinners are ready and they look so freaking good. They look so good. So just cover them and then you can store them in the fridge. And then let's put the final dinners together. We're almost done prepping all of our meals for the entire week. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we've got our roasted potatoes and our salmon, which look so delicious. So I'm dividing the roasted potatoes into four containers. I love roasted potatoes so much, oh my gosh. Then I'm serving the four portions of salmon into the containers too. You can use your roasted chickpeas here if you made that as the plant-based option instead of the salmon. And you can just divide the roasted chickpeas into four servings um, as we're doing with the salmon. And then also some of the roasted vegetables. I'm using the roasted butternut squash, beetroot and onion mix to go with the salmon and potatoes. I just think it pairs really nicely. And then add the rest of the steamed broccoli. You can use the last four servings now. And after you've added the broccoli, these dinners are ready. And there you go, all of the dinners are ready. They look amazing. Just cover them, store them in the fridge with all of your other meals. And we are done. <laughs> we are prepped and we are done. We have prepped all of our meals and all of our snacks for the entire week. So you can choose either one of your overnight oats or the smoothies for each morning. What's really great is that 
Every single morning we have a completely different breakfast recipe and your overnight oats are good to go. You can literally eat them out of the jar with a spoon or you can serve them in a bowl, whatever you like. And the smoothies are all prepped and ready to go. All you need to do is just throw your prepped smoothie into a blender with about half a cup to three quarters of a cup of water and then you're good to go. And you can just snack on the raw nuts on the side. Then for lunch you've got the option of the eggs with the brown rice and the salad or the quinoa, the chickpeas and the salad or your other plant-based alternative. For your snacks you've got a different fruit and nut snack combination that you can pick for each day. So you can take whichever one you want that day or any other 200 calorie snack that you'd prefer. And then for dinner you've got the chicken, the quinoa and the vegetable dinner or you've got the salmon, the roast potato and the vegetable dinner or your plant-based alternatives. All of the foods that I've used should last for the whole week if stored in the fridge. Just make sure that you eat them within seven days. You can freeze the dinners if you'd prefer to do that and then heat them up, but the lunches and the overnight oats won't keep well in the freezer, so you'll want to keep those in the fridge. And also be sure to keep your smoothie prep in the freezer. And you can heat your meals up in a pan or any other way that you'd prefer. I like to heat my chicken dinner up in a pan for a few minutes and then serve it. It just takes a few minutes and then it's heated and it's super easy. And then I like to take my overnight oats and my lunches and my snacks with me to work. All of the meals are roughly 400 calories each and if you've followed my guidelines with the alternative plant-based options and portions, your meals should still be roughly 400 calories each as well. And I really hope that you enjoy these meals and recipes. These are meals that I like to eat and recipes based on what I ate when I was trying to lose weight. If you don't like a particular ingredient that I've used, then feel free to use another similar ingredient that you'd prefer that is roughly the same amount of calories. Just remember that we're all different and so every woman has different calorie needs to lose weight in a healthy way. So if you'd like to follow a 1400 calorie diet, you can eat all three of the meals as well as the snack every single day as I showed you um, all of the meal prep that we did today basically. If you'd like to follow a 1200 calorie diet you can eat all three of the meals and then just leave out the fruit in that snack which is 200 calories because if you minus 200 calories from 1400 calories you get 1200 calories. And if you need to eat more to lose weight in a healthy way because some women do like 1600 calories or more then you can easily just add another 200 calorie snack like another 200 calorie fruit and nut snack or any other snack that's 200 calories or a snack that's more than 200 calories if you need that. <laughs> I'm so tired now. Oh my gosh. Okay. But you know what? All the meals are prepped and that's going to save so much time during the week. <sighs> but yeah, that was a lot of work, but um, got it done in an hour. So okay so that was a little bit of work but it's it's so worth it all the meals are done for the entire week i don't have to think about cooking or making food for the entire week so i love doing this when i was trying to lose weight it was just such a time saver and then i didn't have to think about the calories that i was going to eat for the entire day or the entire week everything was prepped and ready to go i knew how many calories i was eating i knew how much I knew like that I was eating healthy food. I knew that I was getting enough food. It's just so easy. So yeah, it's it's definitely a little bit of effort for the one hour, but it's so worth it because then it's just all done. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed meal prepping with me today. And yeah, I'm making weight loss meal prep. I really hope that this video can be helpful to you somehow. And I hope that you enjoyed the recipes. I'm also gonna put all of the recipes that I showed you today over on my blog for you. There'll be a link to that in the description box below for you. And I'm also gonna put a link below this video to a little free three day eating plan that you can go download on my blog for weight loss. It's a little ebook, you can go download it. So there'll be links to both of those in the description box for you thank you so much for watching this video make sure that you give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe to my channel for more videos and i will see you again soon